stealthily dealing with scouts, no problem for me. Surviving sustain alarms, ta, child's play. Killing a birther without taking any damage whatsoever, <laughs> who do you think I am? Surviving down in the complex has become a lot easier for me over the years. There's not a whole lot that I can't handle all that well when I play through these expeditions. Now, if only... Uh... <laughs> Ugh. If only I could say the same thing about these stupid allergies. Uh... Hello everyone, Professor Scaly here, and welcome to the alternate R4B3 level guide. As you heard there in the intro, allergies are kicking my butt right now as we are about halfway through spring and quickly approaching summer, which is when things get pretty horrible for me. So if I sound a little bit nasally or congested in this video or upcoming level guides, that's why. I'm going to do my best to record when I'm not feeling like crap, that way the audio quality is as good as I can get it. But of course, if my nose is being a bother for days on end, I sort of have to record as I can't afford to fall behind on my upload schedule. Moving forward though, we're going to be starting off this level guide just like we always do with your loadout. And this time around, I recommend you bring along with you a bio tracker, a mind deployer, a burst or a sniper sentry, and then the fourth slot can be any sentry of your choice. When it comes to the bio tracker, I'm not really recommending this for a very particular reason, aside from the fact that bio tracker is a really good tool and honestly I feel like you should always bring one with you, but that doesn't mean that it isn't useful in the level whatsoever. When it comes to the mind deployer, there are a fair amount of alarm doors we're going to have to deal with, there is a blood door that we'll have to go through if we go for the overload objective, and even when it comes to just main objective only runs, there are multiple uplink terminals we have to deal with and plenty of doors we can utilize mines with, so mind deployer is a really good tool to bring with us. Then when it comes to that burst or sniper sentry, we want a mid to long range sentry that is good at dealing with enemies as the alarms we have to deal with during the optional objective portions. Don't really have any doors we can properly utilize with mines or sea foam. So having some extra raw firepower to just thin the waves a little bit can help out tremendously. And I find that burst or sniper sentry will work best for that killing role. As for the other sentry, you could take any sentry you feel like bringing it with you. If you want even more killing power, another burst or sniper sentry will work perfectly. If you want a little bit more support capabilities, then maybe a shotgun or an auto sentry. Just be careful if you do bring one of those two, as shotgun and auto sentries, while they are pretty decent if utilized properly, if you place them out in the open, they'll go through ammunition really quickly, consuming a lot of tour fill and not really killing a whole lot of enemies, especially that auto sentry. So if you bring a shotgun sentry, try to position it in a place where it'll only shoot at enemies once it actually gets close to it. And the auto sentry, I just recommend you keep with you. That way, as enemies are approaching you, they will get staggered by the sentry and you can shoot at them with your own guns to quickly kill them off. That way, the auto sentry does not expend too much of its ammunition. And last thing to mention is that any of you who are going for a main objective only run, feel free to swap out one of the sentries with a seafoam launcher, as I find a mine seafoam launcher combination helps out a whole lot more for the uplinks, as there are plenty of doors you could just mine seafoam and just keep seafoaming over and over again to keep enemies out until you finish every single one of the uplink codes, in which case you can just let the door break open and then deal with those few enemies and you're in the clear. Dropping down into level, you'll see that your main objective is to find three specific terminals and create uplinks with every single one of them. And these terminals will always be located inside zone 38, 39, and the last one will be either in zone 40 or zone 41. And you and your teammates are going to be starting off inside zone 37. In here, you'll be able to find your very first bulkhead key, as well as the bulkhead door control and doors to your main and secondary objective. And you'll also be able to find a color key card, which you will need in order to unlock the security door to zone 38. So go throughout the zone, grab the resources, deal with the enemies, get both of these key cards, and once you have all of that, you can head over to the far eastern side where you'll find that security door to zone 38. Plug the key card into it, and then you'll be able to see that there is a class 2 cluster alarm tied to the door. So let's take a look at a map overlay. As you can see, there's only one possible small location for the enemies, and they'll always go through these two doors to get to you and your team. So make sure both of them are shut, and then go on ahead and place a mine on the door tied directly to your room. And then if you want to, you can place out one or even both of your sentries facing towards that door on the inside of the room with you, and you should be good. 
Inside Zone 38, like I said earlier, you'll be able to find your very first uplink terminal. But before we deal with that, we have to go throughout the entirety of the zone and clear out all of the enemies, as we don't want to risk any of them getting pulled in during the uplink alarm itself. So I'll go around, deal with the enemies, grab resources, keep an eye out as there are two different terminals in the zone, one of which is going to be your uplink. And once you've taken care of everything and you know where your uplink terminal is, you can start setting up your defenses. Which if you have the terminal that's in the second room of the zone, so the one further to the west, your map overlay looks like this. As you can see, there's a few different locations enemies can possibly spawn from and plenty of doors we can utilize. So every single door I've highlighted, you're going to want to make sure you shut. And then this door right here in particular, since it's the last door they have to go through to get into your room, make sure you mine that. And if you have seafoam, go on ahead and seafoam that door as well. You don't have to worry about enemies spawning to the west of you, by the way, as there's only one room to the west and enemies cannot spawn outside of the zone that the uplink terminal itself is in. If you have the terminal, though, that's a little bit further into the zone, your map overlay looks like this, which is a little bit more difficult, but not all that complicated. A few different locations enemies could spawn from and a few different doors they could potentially go through. So once again, every single door I've highlighted, make sure are left shut. And then these three doors that lead directly into your room, go on ahead and mine every single one of them. And then during this uplink, what you're going to want to do is just simply keep an eye out for which direction they're coming from. BioTracker will help out tremendously for this. So you can then either run over to the door that they are going for and quickly seafoam it if you do have a seafoam watcher, or if you're just rocking two sentries in the mine deployer, you could just have one person at that door, maybe even one sentry, and the other two people could just keep an eye on the other two doors as there is a good chance they'll come at you from two or maybe even all three directions at once. But you got three people on the team, so one person at each door, one person on the terminal, and you should be good. Once you finish this uplink, you can head back into zone 37, plug the bulkhead key into the door control, and then if you're somebody who's interested in only the main objective portion of this guide, go on ahead and skip to the time I see on screen. There we will continue to talk about zone 39, the second uplink terminal, and then eventually the third uplink terminal and everything you need to do to get back to extraction. Everybody else though, we are going to be doing the secondary scan and we're going to be heading over to the security door to zone 123. That security door is just simply a full team scan, so do the scan, and then we can head right on in and get started on our secondary objective. Upon entering into zone 123, you'll see that your secondary objective is to retrieve two cryogenic cases, and these cases will always be located inside zone 125 and zone 126. And inside zone 123, not really a whole lot to take note of, a fair amount of the enemies are going to be sleeping giant strikers and there will be two scouts patrolling about. When you make your way to the far western side, you'll be able to find a security door to zone 124, and this door will have a full team scan tied to it. Inside zone 124, it's going to be one big room, so be careful in here as there are going to be two scouts and a fair amount of enemies, both smalls and bigs, and a single gunshot or a single enemy screaming will wake up the entirety of the room. So take your time going throughout here, dealing with the enemies, and once everything is dead, look around, grab resources, and keep an eye out for a bulkhead key, as your second one is going to be located in here, as well as the bulkhead door control and door to the overload objective. So once you've found the key, go on ahead and plug it in and do that scan for the overload door, that way it's unlocked, and then just go throughout the room, grab resources, and once you've gotten everything you want, we're going to take a slight detour, because in this room is the security door to 125 and 126, as well as that overload door but every single one of these doors has an alarm tied to it. And right now we have a really nice one-way funnel into the room with that bridge, so we want to do as many alarms as we can before we open up doors. So first, we're going to be dealing with the class one sustain alarm that's tied to the overload door. As you can see with the map overlay, there's only one possible small location for enemies, and there's a door right here that we could shut, mine, and seafoam if we happen to have a seafoam grenade with us. That way more enemies pile up on the door and die to that mine. As for the sentries, burst and sniper sentries can go on the bridge facing towards the direction enemies come from as it's a great line of sight for them. And if you brought a shotgun sentry or an auto sentry with you, just go on ahead and hold on to it until the scan appears and then just plop it down in front of you facing towards the staircase that enemies will have to take to get up to you in that room and you should be good. Once you're ready to go, activate the alarm, get to work on the scan, and once it's finished, make sure you do not open up the security door to 363, leave this shut for the time being, and then just simply head over to the western side to the security door to zone 125. This door is going to have a class 3 alarm tied to it where every single scan is going to be a full team scan, but you're basically already set up for it as the map overlay is literally the exact same. I don't even need to show it. So once your team is good to go, activate that alarm, get to work on the scans, make sure everybody is following that line so you can get those full team scans done ASAP. And once the alarm is finished, go on ahead, deal with any of the enemies that are still left alive, pack up your sentries, and then you can head into zone 125. 
Now, as for zone 125 itself, as I said, your first crouch in a case will be located in here, as well as that key card for 126, but most of the sleeping enemies in this zone are going to be giant strikers. So I recommend that every single enemy in the first room you deal with, because if you don't, there's a good chance they will get pulled in during the alarm for uh, the door to zone 126, but everything in the second and third room of the zone, you could leave B. You do not have to kill them whatsoever. Just sneak your way through, grab the few resources in here, get the key card and get the crowd in a case, and then just make your way back out. Once you're back out into the main hub room, you can head to the southern end to the security door to 126, plug your key card into it, and then you can get ready to deal with the class 4 alarm that's tied to that door. Which, as you can see with the map overlay, just like before, enemies will be spawning all the way out to the far east, so having a burst or sniper sentry on the bridge will help out. And then enemies can also spawn to the west of you, and there are three doors that you can shut and mine. But set up exactly how you want to, and once you're good to go, activate the alarm, get to work on the scans, and also, just like the security door to zone 125, all four of these scans are going to be full team scans, so make sure everybody's following the line and you gain those done as quickly as you can. Once the alarm is finished, go ahead and deal with any of the enemies that are still left alive, pack up your sentries, and then you can head into zone 126. Which, zone 126 is basically the same thing as 125, a fair amount of enemies in here, most of them are going to be giant strikers, but you don't have to kill any of the enemies whatsoever, not even the ones in the first room, as there is no chance they'll be pulled in during an upcoming alarm, unless if you purposely run all the way out here and shoot near the door. But just sneak your way through the zone, look for resources, as well as that second crowd gen case, and once you have all of that, backtrack out into the main hub room, and just drop off both of your crowd gen cases wherever you want, and then go back to that northern security door to zone 363 and open it up. Once it's open, we can head on inside and get started on our overload objective. Upon entering into zone 363, you'll see that your overload objective is to find a specific terminal and just put a backdoor command into it. And this terminal is always going to be located inside zone 366. And that's actually located at the northern end of the room you just entered into. But before we could go for it, we need to clear out the zone of all the regular strikers and shooters, potentially a few giant strikers, as well as usually two scouts who will be patrolling about. So go throughout the area, deal with all the enemies, grab resources and resupply with them, and then head over to that northern door to check on it, because that door will be locked and requires a color key card in order to open it up. And that key card will always be located either in zone 364, which can be found to the western side of the zone, or 365, which is found to the eastern side. So figure out what the key card is, then head to the terminal that's in the eastern room to query the key card so you know which one of the two zones it's in, and then you can head over to the door and get ready for the alarm. As the security door to zone 364 will have a class 4 cluster alarm tied to it, and the security door to zone 365 has a class 5 cluster alarm tied to it. So how you're going to want to set up for it will change a little bit depending on which door you have as they're not in the same room, but as you can see, if you're heading to the west to 364, you're leaving both of the eastern doors open as we want to preserve these for a little bit later on in the level, and when it comes to the two doors into your room, you are shutting the northern door and then leaving the southern one open so all the enemies during the alarm will funnel in through here. As for your sentries, they will be in the room with you near that door, probably one on each side of that little corridor area down below, that way it's shooting at enemies from the front as well as from behind. If you're heading to the east to 365 though, you're going to be doing a similar thing, although just a little bit different. We will leave the two western doors open, and then the southern door to your room you are going to shut because you don't want enemies to come in through there, but the northern door you are going to leave open. As for your sentries, you just simply place them to the north outside the door in that little hallway area, and you should be good. Once you have everything set up how you want to, activate the alarm, get to work on the scans, and once the alarm is finished, make sure you clear out every single one of the enemies before you open up the door, grab your sentries, and then you can head together as a team. Inside zone 364 or 365, things are pretty similar. The zone is covered in pitch black darkness, there's going to be a lot of enemies, both smalls and bigs, as well as a single scout patrolling about, and a sleeping birther in one of the rooms. So I recommend be very careful as you make your way through here, because the last thing you want to do is wake up that scout, and then also potentially wake up the birther, and waste a lot of resources dealing with them. So sneak your way through, look for resources and that keycard, and once you have all of that, head back out into 363, head to the security door to 366, plug your keycard into it, and that will give you access to the class 1 sustain alarm that is tied to the door. And as you can see with this map overlay, there's a bit of stuff to take note of when it comes to this alarm. So first of all, there are four different spawn locations, three down to the south, and then one to the west or to the east, depending on which zone you open up. And when it comes to the southern spawns, there's not really anything you could do because all they have to do is go through open security doors, so nothing we can shut to mine our seafoam. And then when it comes to either the western spawn or the eastern spawn, you're basically doing the same thing. You're having the northern door of the room shut, that way enemies will never go through it, and the southern door of the room opened up, that way enemies will come out of the zone and funnel it through that open door, and they'll come through the middle of the room. 
We're doing this because we want to ensure that no matter where enemies spawn from, they're coming up through the middle of the room for the most part and not from the left or from the right of us right around the corner. As for sentries, you could just place them near you in the room. There's not really any super specific spots you need to put them. Just keep in mind that auto sentries and shotgun sentries might try to shoot at enemies from a fair distance and waste ammunition, so either don't place them down or maybe place them a little bit further away from you, or just whatever you think would be the best way to place them, that way they are at maximum efficiency. Once you're ready to go though, activate the alarm, get to work on the scan, and once it's finished, make sure you clear out every single one of the enemies. And then as you can also tell, that security door 366 is not only a class 1 sustain alarm, but it is also a blood door. So place a mine or two on the door, and then before you activate it, you're going to want to have a fallback plan. Because inside zone 366 is a sleeping birther that is guaranteed to wake up shortly after that door opens up. So what you're going to want to do is go to either the western room or the eastern room, depending on which one you opened up. So if you open up the western zone, go into the eastern room, that way you don't wake up anything in there when you start shooting. Because you're going to go into the room, shut the southern door, and then leave the northern door open. That way after you open up the blood door, you can all quickly run in through that northern door, and then you're going to shut it behind you. Some enemies will spawn in from the blood door. The mines should kill most, if not every single one of them, as I believe hybrids will never spawn in during this blood door. And then the Bertha will wake up and slowly but surely it will make its way out to you and that shut door. Once it gets near the door, you could just simply open it up real quick. And if you have a seafoam grenade, you could seafoam her. Or if you don't have a seafoam grenade, you could just shoot her and kill her the normal way. So just shoot her down, and once she is dead, you're in the clear. You can head into zone 366. In here, there will be more resources for you to resupply with. There will be your third and final bulkhead key. And also in the room, you'll be able to find that terminal. Now, before you put the command into the terminal, you're going to want to do a little bit more preparation. Because after you put the command in, a full team scan will appear. And once you finish the full team scan, a few waves of regular strikers and shooters and hybrids will spawn in two rooms away from you just like they typically would. So I recommend that before you finish a full team scan, have the mine deploy person go back out into zone 363, shut all four of those doors and place a mine on every single one of them. And then once that's done, go back in, finish a full team scan and stay in the room. This will make it so all the enemies will either spawn all the way down south, in which case there's no mines to deal with them, but they are pretty far away from you, or they will spawn in one of those two rooms and they'll have to break down some of those doors that have mines on them in order to get to you. That will weaken the wave a little bit and then you can just chill in the room with your sentries and wait for things to get close to you and then just shoot them down and deal with them as they approach you. Then once every single one of the Emmys have been dealt with, your overall objective is completed. The terminal command has been put in, there are no more Emmys coming after you, so all you have to do now is backtrack out into the secondary sector, grab both of those cargo crates and go all the way back to the beginning of the level, drop those off right where you drop down to the level as that's where your extraction scan will be, and at this point the only thing left to do is finish the rest of the main objective. So go back to the bulkhead door control, plug your bulkhead key into it, and do the scan for the main objective portion, and that will unlock the security door to zone 39. That security door is just going to be a full team scan, so head over there, do the scan, and then walk right on in. Alrighty, so continuing on with the rest of the main objective, we are now inside zone 39, and in here will be your second uplink terminal. However, we're not going to be doing this one quite yet. We're actually going to be saving this terminal for last. And the reason for that is because just like every other level in the game where your main objective is to do one or multiple uplinks, the moment you finish the final uplink, it's going to cause an extraction alarm to initiate. And we don't want to be really far away from where our extraction scan is when we finish it. We ideally want to be as close as we can possibly get. And the uplinks in this zone are basically the closest ones back to the beginning of the level. So save this one for last, that way once you come back and finish this uplink, you don't have to run all that far to get to extraction, which means there aren't quite as many enemies you'll have to deal with while you wait for that scan to get all the way up to 100%. So figure out where the uplink is, as there are two of them in this zone, or two terminals, one of which will be the uplink, so know exactly where it is, and then go throughout the rest of the zone, clear out the enemies, grab resources and resupply with them, and then keep an eye out for either a power cell or a color key card, because the security doors to zone 40 and 41 are somewhere inside of this zone, but both of them require something in order to unlock them. Specifically, you need that color key card to unlock the security door to zone 40, and you need that power cell to be plugged into the nearby generator to unlock the security door to zone 41. So if you haven't already hopped onto a terminal to figure out where your third and final uplink terminal is, you're going to want to do that now, that way you know which one of the two zones you're heading into. Because both of those security doors will actually have class 3 alarms tied to them. And this is where things get a little bit awkward. Because as you can see with this map, these alarm doors are in close proximity to those terminals. Which means that the doors throughout the zone are shared between the alarm door you have to do and the uplink terminal you have to do. So at this point, you know, it's rundown 4, it's a B3 level. I trust that every single one of you watching this video knows how to figure out where enemies could potentially spawn from and what routes they are more than likely going to take to get to you and your team. 
So what I recommend you do is figure out exactly which one of the two terminals is going to be your uplink terminal and where the enemies could spawn from and which doors could be utilized for the uplink and then look at your alarm door and figure out the exact same thing. That way you see which doors are not shared and figure out which doors are shared and decide when you want to use them, whether it be the alarm door right now or the uplink terminal at the end. I could show map overlays for every single situation to make things a little bit easier for you all, but that would be four separate map overlays for every single instance, and I'll be honest, I don't really want to do that. I know you guys are good enough to figure this out on your own, but once you're good to go, activate the alarm door, whether it's the one to zone 40 or 41, and once it's finished, you can head into whichever one of the two zones you're going into. When it comes to the two zones, they are fairly similar to each other. They will have a fair amount of enemies inside of them, both smalls and bigs, as well as a single scout patrolling about, so be careful of them. But of course, the layout of the zones are quite a bit different, which means I need to show map overlays for every single one of the uplinks, as there are two different terminals in both of the zones. So let's start off with zone 40 itself. If you get the terminal that is a little bit closer to the western side, so if in the middle of the zone, your map overlay is going to look like this, which is a little bit of a weird one, because this zone only consists of three rooms, and every single room is one room away from that terminal. So what you're actually going to want to do is have one person on the terminal itself, two people staying somewhere nearby, and the fourth person is going to be in that far eastern room. The reason for this is because that room is really close to us and there's no door that separates them, so we don't want enemies spawning a few inches away from us and being able to attack us incredibly quickly. So having one person stay over there in room C in a position where they can help shoot at the enemies that come into room B will make it so we only have to worry about enemies spawning in room A. As for the doors, you could shut and mine every single one of them, or if you want to, you could leave this door right here in the middle open and just funnel the enemies in through that corridor and have your sentry set up there. If you have the uplink that's over to the east though in room C, it's a little bit easier for you. Enemies can only possibly spawn in room A, so you're just going to want to either shut mine and see from all three doors, or once again, leave the middle one open, that way enemies funnel in through there, and have your sentries in the corridor, and you should be good. If your uplink terminal is over inside zone 41 though, your map overlays are going to be looking a bit different. If you have the one that's over in the western room, it's going to be the same thing. You've got two rooms connected to you, both of which are one room away, so they can spawn in either of those two rooms. Now, we're not going to be splitting up the team whatsoever because we don't really want to isolate ourselves too much for this, but it's not too big of a deal as there are doors that they will have to go through to get to us. So I would just say these three doors, shut, mine, and seafoam every single one of them, or if you don't have seafoam, just simply shut them and mine them, and then just hold out somewhere near the person on the terminal. If you have the one that's up in the northeast corner though, in room B, your map overlay is going to look like this. Again, pretty similar, two different rooms enemies can spawn from. This time though, there are only two doors that lead into your room, so just make sure you shut, mine, and seafoam both of them if you can, and then have your sentry set up however you want and you should be good and once you finish this uplink all that's left for you to do is head back into zone 39 set up for that final uplink and then deal with that again i'm not going to be showing map overlays because it's incredibly situational it'll be hard for me to do that but set up however you see best fit and then just work on the uplink itself and once you put that fourth and final code in correctly all you have to do is just run. You don't have to wait for the fourth code to fully process. As long as it's the correct one, the moment you hit enter, you can run away from the terminal and everybody could just quickly run back to the beginning of the level and your extraction scan will appear shortly afterwards once the command has fully processed. Once it's there, you just have to hop onto the extraction scan and hold out there for a bit. And assuming you can get the scan all the way up to 100%, you are done and you have beaten alternate R4B3. And that's all there is to it. Alternate R4B3 was the first level to ever utilize sustain alarms, which weren't exactly what we were expecting them to be back then. Since the level description says to get back in, it's going backwards, a lot of players, including myself, thought that this level would contain a traveling alarm. Little did we realize that we wouldn't be seeing that mechanic implemented until later in Rundown 6. As for sustain alarms themselves, I do like the idea of them, but I find the superior version of sustain alarms is the full zone alarm variant, which we sadly didn't get until later in Rundown 5. And while the first few implementations of the full zone alarm weren't necessarily the most exciting, I do find that levels with full zone alarms in them are quite challenging and a lot of fun to problem solve and figure out. As always though, thank you for watching this video all the way to the very end. I do hope that it was able to provide you with some assistance in beating this level. If you have any tips or tricks this level that you want to share, any questions for me, or you just have something in general that you would like to say, please do let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me, and if you want to join my lovely community, there's a link to my Discord down in the description, as well as some other links you might be interested in. Among those links being one to the official GTFO merch store, which as always, 
I highly recommend you check out if you're a fellow GTF enthusiast and you're looking to pick up some sweet merch. Until next time, I pray you're all doing better than I am. Ugh, allergies are such a pain. And hopefully, I'll see all you wonderful people in the next video.